this video, I want to show you how to get port mirroring set up so that you can see the traffic that's flowing between these two ECGs. These ECGs are set up just like the last video, so they both have static IP addresses. This one, oh, I'm sorry, this one is hooked up to the simulator back here. That's pulling trend information from that and it's sending it over to this one through the switch over here. Now what we want to do is we want to have the traffic between these two machines be viewable on this laptop. And the setup for this is going to look like this. So I have both ECGs connected to the switch and the laptop off to the side, which is going to be receiving the mirrored traffic from these two ECGs. And we have to mirror them because if you remember how switches work back in the previous videos, once an established link between these two ECGs is formed, is found in the switch, any traffic that's being sent from ECG1 to ECG2 is going to go directly between the two ports. There's not going to be any kind of cross traffic between the other ports. So that's kind of a bummer for our laptop because our laptop is never going to see this traffic. So port mirroring is going to set it so that one of these ports is going to be mirrored and sent over to this port. And essentially what that means is that any traffic that's sent or received on this port is going to be copied and sent over to this port and then sent down to the laptop. This will allow us to view the network traffic between these two machines without having to do any kind of weird setup with like cable splicing and stuff like that. So you notice here that I have the ECGs connected to ports one and two respectively. Honestly, in practice, it doesn't matter which ports um, in most cases, at least in this, in this circumstance. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to say that these first two ports are for the ECGs. And I'm going to have the mirrored port be port 8. But down here on the setup, I have it plugged into port 7. That is, my laptop is plugged into port 7. And that is for the setup process. And what we need to do is we need to log into the switch interface and set up port mirroring and enable it on that port. And to avoid any kind of traffic collisions, we want to do that on a port that's not going to be our mirrored port. So that's why I have it plugged into port seven right now. But when we have port mirroring enabled, we're going to take it out of port seven and put it into port eight. So the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to configure your computer manually to use an IP address in the range of 192.168.0.1, which is the default IP address of the switch. And I've made videos on how to do this in the past. Um, on Linux, it's a little bit more complicated with my particular setup, but um, in this case, my computer's IP address is 192.168.0.5 with a net mask of 255.255.255.0. So once you have that set up, you want to go to open your web browser and go to 192.168.0.1 in the address bar. And from there, you want to log in to the switch. In this case, the username and password is admin and password. And from here, what we want to do is we want to go to uh, monitoring and then port mirror. And at the top here, you can see we have the port mirror option and right now it's disabled. So we want to go and select that to enable and then select port eight as our mirroring port. Click apply and you'll see at the top our operation successful. That just means that port mirroring is now enabled but it's not actually set up yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose what ports we want to be mirrored. In this case, I'm going to, like in the, in, the, in the example, I want to have port one be mirrored. So I'm going to select port one. You can see over here, we have ingress and egress. We want both to be enabled. So any information going in or out of that port is going to be copied. And we'll click apply. And you'll see here, operation successful. And from here, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to open up Wireshark. So I'm going to go, Wireshark, and I'm going to open up the Ethernet adapter, in this case, this one here. And I can actually just close out of uh, the web browser now. So you can see the traffic here, um, and it's all being generated pretty much by, uh, let's call it ECG31, which is the last number of the ECG's IP address. And this is a packet that's being sent out as far as I can, it, it, the ECG is essentially trying to find other ECGs to talk to. Um, so effectively, there's only two ECGs, so it's not actually sending it to anyone in particular. But as you can see, 
these two ECGs are talking to each other, but we're not seeing the traffic between the two. So this is where our mirrored port comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first stop the capture. And on our switch here, I'm going to take my ethernet cable out of port seven and put it into port eight. And now that it's connected, what I'll do is I will make a new capture. We can take a look at what's going on. So now you might be able to see there's a lot more traffic going on, more so than before. And now we're seeing traffic from both ECGs number 33 and 31. So this is the traffic going between the two. Unfortunately, the traffic is uh, not viewable. It's all encoded, uh, it's proprietary. So we can't really see what these values mean, but we can see that there is traffic going between 31 and 33 at a pretty continual rate. And there's some things you can do to experiment. For example, I unplugged and plugged back in ECG number two. So the connection between these two was interrupted. And you can see the traffic between them has dropped off almost entirely. Now if I go back to this ECG here and pull up the remote trends again and select full bed view, you can see the traffic really starts taking off between the two devices again as it's pulling the trend information.